Hello everybody, this is Graham Anderson and today I'm going to be looking at Pact. Now this game takes place in the Hidden Land and is a sequel to the game Pandoria. Now Pandoria was a much larger game, much more Euro style game. So really the only connection is the theme loosely. The goblins have kicked out the remains of the five realms out of the Hidden Lands and have claimed the lands as their own. They need to overcome some tasks, which they'll try and do themselves, but may ask for help from the other goblin clans every once in a while. Now Pact is a card game where you're trying to collect cards, and each card represents a certain type of goblin. You're going to be using these goblins you've collected and have played in front of you to complete some public tasks. The twist in this game though is when you go to complete a task, you can use cards that, the, that one of your neighbors has in front of them. And if you complete a task this way, you only score one point and your neighbor scores one point. But it's probably better than your neighbor scoring two points all by themselves. So, was this an enjoyable game? Or maybe you should have had stayed in Hidden Land? Let's get it to the table, see how it's played, and I'll come back for my final thoughts on Pact. Here's Pact set up for four players. In this walkthrough, I'm going to show you how to play the base game, then I'll give you a quick introduction to the expert rules. The goblin deck has shuffled, and in this deck there are six different types of goblins, each represented by a different color. Deal each player six cards, then place it face down to create a draw pile and deal out the first four cards face up. Next, take the task cards and separate them into the three seasons, spring, summer, and fall. Shuffle each set separately, then depending on the player count, remove cards from the spring set. Then place the fall ones down first, then summer on top of them, and finally the spring on top, and draw the first four cards face up. Place pack cards in between each set of players, so each player should have a pack card between them and each neighbor. The first player receives a starting player token, then take the six specialist cards, which will give you a special ability when used, and starting with the player in the last turn order, deal one per player until they are all dealt out. Each player will then play one card from their hand into their play area. Now the game is played until you can no longer refill the task row cards. On your turn you'll take one of two actions, then optionally complete tasks. The first action you can do is take two goblins from the middle of the table. You can take from either the face down cards or from the draw pile, but the cards are not replaced until you have taken your two cards. Then refill the row back up to four cards. If the draw deck is ever exhausted, just shuffle the discards to create a new draw deck. The other action you can do on your turn is to play up to three goblin cards from your hand into your play area. Make sure all players can see how many of each type of goblin you have in front of you. Once you have taken one of these two actions, you can optionally complete a task card. Let's have a quick look at the tasks. The top left will show you how many of the different types of goblins you need to discard to claim the task card. Across the bottom will be the name of the task, and some of the later tasks will show some dynamite, which will be explained later. There are two ways to complete a task. You can do it all by yourself, which means you're going to discard cards in front of you as required by the task card, and take the task card and place it horizontally face up in front of you. The other way is to use your and one of your neighbor's cards. You pick one of your neighbors, and you can use their cards in combinations with your own. Now to claim a task this way, you must always use at least one of your cards and at least one of your neighbors. And your neighbor cannot prevent you from using their cards. All the used cards go back into the discard pile, then you take the task card and place it on the pact between you and the neighbor whose cards you've just used. You, and only you, will then draw a random card from the goblin deck. Each task that is done with the neighbor goes on top of a previous task card, so just the bottom of the previous task card is showing. You can continue to complete tasks on your turn, and once you're done completing tasks, refill the task row back up to four. Then it's the next player's turn. The specialist cards are a way to use a special ability on your turn and used in conjunction with your main action. For example, this one means when you recruit goblins from the middle of the table, you can recruit one additional one. Or, after playing goblins into your play area, play one additional goblin. You can only use one specialist per turn, and when you've used it, you pass it to the player on your right so there may be times where you hold all or none of the specialist cards. The game ends when you can no longer fill the tasks up to four, then play out the remainder of the round. Each player will then count up all of their dynamite sticks, from the tasks they have completed themselves and with their two neighbors. Whichever player has the most dynamite, they can claim one of the remaining tasks and adds it to their completed tasks that they did solo. If there is a tie or there are no tasks left, no one gets a task card. Finally, add up your points. For each task you completed solo, you gain two points. For each task you completed with a neighbor, you score one point. 
If you completed four or five tasks with a neighbor, you're going to score an additional one point, or if you've completed six or more tasks, you can score an additional two points per neighbor. Then the player with the most points is the winner. Let's quickly talk about the expert components. Each player will receive a random master goblin. Players will also get a dynamite card. Take meeples in a marker of one color, and the meeples will go on the master goblin, and the marker goes on the zero of the dynamite card. Next, deal two command cards to each player. These are our end of game scoring cards. You can keep one or both of the cards, but each command card will also have a negative point value if you do not achieve any of the goals on the card. They're all detailed in the back of the rulebook. For the gameplay itself, the expert game gives you one more action you can take on your turn in addition to the taking goblins or playing goblins. You can now place one of your meeples on the top most recently completed task card on one of the packed cards. You pay the cost in goblins from your hand or play area, and the goblins you discard must match the task card that you plan to place your meeple on. When you have a meeple on a task card, it will count as one additional point when we do end of game scoring, and the meeple is worth the number of dynamite sticks on the task, so you are essentially doubling the dynamite on that task card just for you. And after placing a meeple, you uncover a permanent goblin on your master goblin. This can be used by yourself or your neighbors just like any other regular goblin card, but it is never discarded. Each time you have five or more different goblins in your play area, you'll move your marker on the dynamite card one spot. If you have all six different types of goblins, move your marker two spots. This will give you points at the end of the game if you can raise this dynamite count high enough. But you can also use this dynamite during the game by spending one dynamite and moving your marker back one space to eliminate one of the required goblins from a task card. So if you are one goblin short to complete a task, you can spend a dynamite from this card to still complete the task. At the end of the game, you're gonna add up your dynamite as usual, but also add dynamite left on your dynamite track and the dynamite from your placed meeples. The player with the most dynamite still takes one of the leftover task cards as normal. Then in addition to your normal points for completed tasks, you will also score an additional point for each task card with your meeple on it, plus any bonus points from your dynamite card, and finally, you'll gain or lose points from your command card. That was just a quick overview of the expert rules, but let's get back to see what I thought about Pact. So let's talk about theme components. The theme is, well, it's a card game, so the theme is not really there. Now, I do like the task cards to have names on them that you have to overcome, but that's kind of where the theme ends. As for the components, the cards themselves are decent quality, but, you know, are starting to show some wear after repeated plays and shuffling, especially in the main goblin cards. Now, all the cards are very well laid out, and they're very easy to read. And I must mention the art. The art is something in this game that I really, really enjoyed. I mean, every task card is different. And every class of goblin in the goblin deck Again, it has, it has a really nice picture on it. Yes, I mean, all the classes have the same picture, but it looks really, really nice. So let's go on to the gameplay. I would recommend that if you've played other card games, you can probably skip the beginner game. It's pretty basic, and you, you just have the one or two actions and then try to complete tasks. Do you have the specialist cards? But beyond that, there's really kind of nothing to the game. So let's talk about the expert game. Now, first of all, we'll go through some, some things I really did like. The dynamite card was probably the most interesting for me. You want to have a lot of different cards in front of you to move that token up. But the more cards you put out, the more likely it is that one of your neighbors will use them to complete a task. That will get you some points, but it makes an interesting decision point. You get to move your dynamite counter if, at the end of your turn, you have different goblins in front of you. So you probably want to be saving them and maybe not using them to complete tasks yourself. And being able to spend dynamite to ignore one of the goblins on a task card makes it very tempting. Ah, but at the cost of potential points at the end of the game, made the dynamite card probably the most interesting decision point during the game. Now the command cards that give you end of game scoring options is also something I thought was really well done. I like that each player is going after something different. So they may not be playing or they, they should be playing differently than you to make sure they complete at least one of their tasks so they don't receive the penalties. Now, I'm not exactly sure whether all the command cards are equal in the ease to get it done, but they do offer some variety to the game. The specialist cards, which are also in the, uh, the beginner game, offer a good choice as well. You need to be thinking of the best time to use them, as when they are used, they go to the next player, to the player on your right. And you may not get another one for a while. Now, I had one game where they all seemed to pile up at one player, and he kind of controlled this, those specialist cards, which worked well for him. I also enjoyed the Master Goblin idea of having to give up, you know, three to five goblins from in front of you and from your hand to put one of your meeples out. Now, since the cards you give up have to match the task card that you're putting your meeple on, it definitely puts a wrinkle on that and makes it a little harder. 
And although it can be tricky to get them out, getting that permanent goblin from your master goblin and the extra points from your meeples are definitely worth it. So as you can see, a lot of what the expert game adds to the game, I really enjoyed. My biggest problem is probably with the game itself. The idea of using someone else's cards uh, to complete a task is actually not bad. And it does happen a fair bit in this game. You get a good selection of cards in front of you, then bam, your neighbor takes them all. Because when you complete a task with your neighbor, you just have to use one of your own and as many of your neighbors as you want. If they have five cards in front of you, you have one, one plus there are five, bam, it's gone. Players did kind of get frustrated and very hesitant to place goblins out that would be useful to their neighbors. Since you want to be able to claim the task for yourself, you're quite often holding you know, the last two or three cards you need in your hand, so it's your turn, you can lay them out and complete the task. That works some of the time, but often one of your neighbors probably has the same two or three cards in their hand and snatches the task you can get uh, before you can claim it. Yes, you are going to get some points for it, which is a saving grace, but it does kind of get frustrating after a while. In the games I've played, almost every person always completes more tasks with their neighbor than they do themselves. But for me, the biggest problem with the game is it goes on too long. I checked and rechecked. The rules say you only pull out four cards from the spring if you're playing with four players. If you're playing with three players, you pull out eight. But that means with four players, you're having to go through about 23 tasks before the game is over. And we went a fair number of rounds when no one was able to claim a task because just of the way the cards came up. The box says it takes 30 to 45 minutes a game, and that's true. I found with four players, which uh, is the way I like it best, it took about 45 minutes. And for what this game is, and with its frustration of other people using your cards so you can kind of never get in a good flow for yourself, it just goes on too long. I would want this game to last maybe a maximum of 30 minutes as you're doing the same thing round after round after round. You either take cards or play cards and try and complete a task. The gameplay itself is not bad, but I definitely felt that it outstayed its welcome. So would I recommend this game? You know, as it stands, no, I would not. It's just too long. A lot of what they added to the game through the expert mode, the master goblins, the command cards, and the dynamite card, I really enjoyed. Even the base concept of using other people's cards was fun for a while. Then it just kept on going and going. You know, maybe if you remove cards from each season to shorten the game overall, it would work better. But with the rules in the box, it's just not what I can recommend. And that's it for the moment. Until next time, thanks for watching.